Hey, it's Mark from Ripple Training. Happy New Year, I think. Um, you know, I've been teaching Final Cut Pro, Motion Resolve, all the software with Ripple Training for 20 years now. This will be 20 years this year. And I'm just thinking about it with being the new year and all this stuff going on with AI and everything and uh, just wondering kind of how much runway we have left to do this as a business. And this is just my opinion. I don't really know how Steve thinks about this. He'll be seeing this video and I'll get his opinion on it. But, uh, you know, I'm concerned. I make most of my living from teaching people software, from selling online tutorials. I also create plugins and I do consulting work and I have a production and post company. So I do a mix of things. But over the last 20 years, most of my living has been teaching software. And um, you know, unclear where that's going to go. Obviously, things have been changing a lot over the past couple of years with ChatGPT and, and various things coming out. And I've been playing with these tools and they're very interesting and can be very helpful to editors. And everybody's got a lot of concerns. But uh, about two weeks ago, Google came out with Gemini 2.0 and that thing really kind of shocked me awake, I guess, because uh, there are several YouTube videos of people using it to teach themselves Blender, which is a popular free open source 3D application, which um, I don't use, but I use Cinema 4D and it's similar. So I can follow along what they're doing. But basically Gemini watches their screen, you give it permission uh, and you talk to it and you say, hey, tell me how to do something. And it tells you how to do it. And it's sort of like, okay. Uh, so I was just wondering, well, how good would it be at teaching Final Cut Pro or Motion. So that's what I did here. So why don't you take a look with me and uh, let's look at this together. Okay, so here we are at Google AI Studio. Here's the URL, aistudio.google.com slash live. I have stream real time selected here. The, this is the only model available to me right now, uh, audio, Output format audio, you can choose a different voice, you have other tools, but let's start out by talking to Gemini. I'll give it permission. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. How can I help you? Sure, I'm just gonna share my screen here. Okay, I understand. Please let me know when you're ready. Yeah, I'm gonna switch to Final Cut Pro. Okay, I'm sharing my screen. Can you see my screen now? Yes, I can see your screen now. It looks like you're showing a video editing application. Do you know which one it is? Yes, that looks like Final Cut Pro. Is there anything you'd like me to help you with in particular? Sure, I'd like you to help me learn how to use it. And let's start with um, importing some media. Let's say I've got some media on an SD card, on a camera card. How, how can I import that? Sure, I can help with that. To import media from an SD card in Final Cut Pro, you'll want to go to the Import Media window. Would you like me to guide you step by step on how to do that? Sure. Okay, first you'll need to ensure your SD card is connected to your computer. Once that's done, in Final Cut Pro, click on the Import Media button, which looks like a downward pointing arrow, in the top left corner of the window. Do you see that button on your screen? I do, and I clicked on it. Great, that will open the media import window. Now you'll need to find your SD card in the left sidebar under the cameras section. Do you see your SD card listed there? No, actually I don't have an SD card installed, but I do have some media on my hard drive I'd like to add. Can I do that? Yes, you can import media from your hard drive. In the media import window, look at the left sidebar under the favorites section. Do you see your hard drive listed there? Uh, I do. In fact, I've already navigated to uh, some clips I want to import, and I've selected a clip I want to import. Let's say I only want to import a section of this clip. How do I do that? Okay, to import only a section of a clip, you can use the range selection tool. You'll see a small playhead and a waveform underneath the clip in the media import window. Drag the playhead to the beginning of the section you want to import, and then drag the end of the selected range to the end of the portion of the clip you wish to import. Does that make sense? Mm, not really. I'm trying to drag on the clip, but nothing's happening. I see. It can be a bit tricky. You need to drag the edges of the yellow bar that appears above the waveform, not the clip itself. 
Uh, Try clicking and dragging the left edge of the yellow bar to set the in point, and then the right edge of the yellow bar to set the out point. Yeah, Does that work for you? No, it's not working for me. I don't even see any waveform at all. Can you tell me how I can turn on the waveforms? Certainly, it sounds like the waveform display might be turned off. In the media import window, look for the icon in the bottom left corner of each clip that looks like three horizontal lines. Click that icon to toggle on the waveform for each clip. Once the waveform is visible, you should be able to select the range you want to import by dragging on the yellow bar. No, Does that help? I, no, it really doesn't. I don't see anything like that at all. I did notice in the bottom right corner, there's a film strip icon, and under there, there's a checkbox for waveforms. Ah, yes, you are correct. I apologize for the confusion. You need to check the box labeled waveforms in the bottom right corner. Then you will see the yellow bar on top of the waveforms where you can adjust your in and out points. Does that work for you? Sure. Hey, let's actually change topics a little bit. Um, I want to import this media. Should I copy to library or leave files in place? That's a good question. Whether you copy to library or leave files in place depends on how you want to organize your media. If you copy it to the library, Final Cut Pro will move the files to its own managed media location. If you leave them in place, Final Cut Pro will access the files from their current location. What do you prefer to do? Uh, what's a best practice? Generally, copying to the library is the best practice for most users. This allows Final Cut Pro to manage and keep track of your media, and prevents any issues if the original files are moved or deleted. However, if you have specific storage needs, such as a large amount of footage or working with large file sizes, leaving files in place may make sense. What is your use case? Now let's move on. Um, I have imported some media. I have some events here. Uh, how can I uh, organize my media to make it easier to locate the pieces of the clips I want to use? OK, there are several ways to organize your media in Final Cut Pro. You can use events, keywords, and ratings. Events are like folders for your media, keywords are like tags, and ratings allow you to quickly sort your best takes. Would you like me to explain how to use any of these options? Yeah, show, just show me how to favorite a clip or a part of a clip. OK, let's start with events, since they are the foundation of organization in Final Cut Pro. No, no, events no, no. I, I asked based you, on... I, I, I want to know how I can favorite okay. part of a clip. OK, you want to know how to fake part of a clip. No, no, do favorite. that by using I want the to know how tool to, to cut I, the I, clip I, into let's, sections. Let's, let's start and again. And manipulating. Can you stop for a minute? I want to know how to rate a clip as a favorite, a part of a clip as a favorite. OK, to mark a clip or part of a clip as a favorite, you can select it in the browser or the timeline and then press the F key. This will add a green bar on top of it, indicating it's a favorite. Does that help? Uh, well, that doesn't work in the timeline. If I select a clip in the timeline and press F, that does not uh, create a favorite. You are right. My apologies. To mark a section of the clip as a favorite in the timeline, you will first need to select the desired portion using the Range Selection tool, which is the R's key. After selecting the portion, you can press the F's key to mark the range as a favorite. Does actually, that work that, now? No, that's not true. I, you actually cannot mark clips as favorites. You can't rate clips, in other words, in the timeline. You can only do it in the browser. You are absolutely correct, and I apologize for the continued confusion. You can only rate clips in the browser, not the timeline. Now, what I want to be able to do in the browser for this particular event, I only want to see my favorites. How can I do that? OK, to view only favorites, click the Filter button in the browser and select Favorites. That should do it. Where's the Filter button? The Filter button looks like three horizontal lines, and it's located at the top of the browser near the Sort button. Uh, there isn't any button with three horizontal lines. Let's move on. Um, I'm in the timeline, and I would like to trim this clip that I'm over. Can you see the clip that I'm over right now? Yes, I can see the clip you're over. Okay. How would you like to trim it? I'd like to trim it to start right here. How, how can I do that? Can I use a keyboard shortcut for that? To trim the start point of the clip you're over, you can press the left bracket key. Do you have any other questions about trimming? Uh, that doesn't work. Do you have another idea? The left bracket key does not work to trim the clip. You're correct. I apologize for that mistake. The left bracket key does not trim the clip. To trim the start of the clip, use the keyboard shortcut option plus left bracket. That did it. Thank you. Will you remember these mistakes that you're correcting yourself about? Yes, I will remember these corrections. Is there anything else I can help you with? Will you remember them tomorrow when I start a new session? 
I do not retain information across sessions. Each session is treated as a new conversation. Okay, let's, um, let's talk about some audio. I have some audio here on this clip and the audio is not great. There's a little bit of noise in it. How can I remove from the noise and make the audio better? Okay, you wanna reduce noise in your audio. In Final Cut Pro, you can use the noise reduction effect. Would you like me to guide you through how to do that? Now, what I wanna know is how I can um, isolate a voice so that it cuts out the background noise. Sure, I can help with that. To isolate a voice and reduce background noise in Final Cut Pro, you can use the voice isolation effect within the audio enhancement section of the inspector. Would you like me to explain how to apply this effect? No, that's actually good. You, that you did a good job with that. So here's, I'd love, like to talk a little bit about color correction, okay? Do you know how to do color correction in Final Cut Pro? Yes, I do. Color correction in Final Cut Pro involves adjusting the color and tone of video footage to achieve the desired look. Would you like me to explain how to do it? Or do you have a specific question about color correction you'd like me to answer? Well, let's start with um, adding uh, a camera LUT. If I've shot some material in, in log uh, and it doesn't automatically have a LUT applied, how can I apply a camera LUT to that footage? Okay, to apply a camera LUT to log footage in Final Cut Pro, you can use the custom LUT effect found under the color category in the effects browser. You can then select the desired LUT file. Would you like a more detailed explanation of this process? Yeah, th that's actually not exactly correct. I want to apply the manufacturer's camera LUT that's built into Final Cut Pro that's not accessible as a, as a custom camera LUT I want to apply the, the camera LUT, uh, and I want to know how to do that. Or let, let me ask the question in a different way. Um, Final Cut Pro has already uh, automatically applied a LUT to my footage, a camera LUT, and I now like to remove it. How do I do that? Okay, I understand. You want to remove the automatically applied camera LUT in Final Cut Pro. To do this, select the clip in the timeline, go to the inspector, and in the color tab, you'll see a setting for camera LUT. Simply set it to none. Is there anything else I can help you with? Yeah, that's not true. I'm in the color inspector and there's no option for a, an LUT. It's actually, if you can just call it a LUT instead of LUT, that would be great. But there's no option for that in the color inspector. Can you figure out where this camera LUT is applied so I can disable it? You're right, my apologies. The camera LUT option is not in the color tab of the inspector. To disable the camera LUT, you'll find it within the settings tab of the inspector directly above the audio tab. Once you click on the settings tab, scroll down to the camera LUT option and set it to none. This will disable the LUT applied to the clip. Actually in the, in the so I am in the, it's the, actually the info inspector and it's to the right of the audio icon, not below it. And in its default basic view, you don't see and you can't access the applied LUT. So how can I access it? You are correct, I apologize for the confusion. In the Info Inspector, in its default view, the applied camera LUT is not visible. Uh, do you know how to use the magnetic mask in Final Cut Pro 11? Yes, I know how to use the magnetic mask in Final Cut Pro 11. The magnetic mask allows you to quickly create a mask around objects or areas in your video. Would you like me to explain how to use it or would you like a more detailed explanation? Uh, I'd like you to tell me how to use it. Okay, to use the magnetic mask in Final Cut Pro, first select the clip you want to mask. Then go to the effects browser and search for the draw mask effect. Drag and drop that effect onto your selected clip. Now in the video Actually, inspector, sorry, I'm you'll see stop. a checkbox for to, magnetic mask. I need to stop you Check there. Check that box. No, no, can you stop please? The mask around. Can you stop please? It, it is not, the magnetic mask is not the draw mask. The magnetic mask is separate from the draw mask. Please tell me how to apply the magnetic mask to this clip so that I can isolate a particular object in it. Well, as you can see, I just took some snippets there. I didn't want to bore you with the entire thing, but you can see how uh, there's a way to go. I mean, it, it is kind of shocking how well it knows the high level concepts of kind of like importing footage and organizing footage and how to edit stuff. and, and even color correction audio can it kind of understands things and can describe them the way they might be described in the manual or something but when it comes to doing something specific it often gets the details wrong it doesn't know 
where the different items are. It makes up menu items, it makes up icons. It just doesn't understand things very well. But like they say, this is the worst it'll ever be, right? It's just gonna get better. So the way I think about it now is, you know, we have a, a big pipeline of, of tutorials uh, to get out. We've got a variety of things to update that we wanna do and new tutorials got a lot of exciting stuff and it's, it's what I love to do. I know it's what Steve loves to do. I'm gonna keep doing that, uh, but I'm definitely worried about the value proposition if the AI is getting this good. So uh, I'm gonna keep going, you know, but I'd love to know your thoughts. Uh, if you've, you know, used our tutorials before, bought our tutorials, bought a plugin, do you see value in us doing this as a business? If you never bought a tutorial, is there anything that would make you buy one versus hacking through AI to get it? I mean, to, to date, it's been hacking through YouTube. You know, you just jump on YouTube and look for the answer and try to find it. And I do that too. And that's why we, have a YouTube channel in order to provide that and hopefully also encourage people after a while of trying to dig around to actually watch a structured tutorial that will teach them a lot more in a compressed time frame rather than trying just to find individual answers but give them a more rounded knowledge of a subject like Fonica Promotion or Resolve, what have you. So very interested in what your thoughts are. Uh, you know, one thing I was thinking about is that when Steve and I go to these in-person conferences like NAB or the Fonica Pro Summit, one of the things I love, and I know Steve does too, is when people come up to us and are like, hey, you know, I've been watching your stuff for years and I learned how to do this and that. And you know, we had the guys from the, the biggest YouTube video that's ever been seen, uh, Despacito come up to us and like, hey, we learned your stuff or some directors come up and you know, we learned this stuff from you. And that gives me a thrill. I love that I've been able to help people do what they love to do. It just makes me wonder about as more and more of the stuff we learn moves to AI, and I'm doing it too all the time. I use ChatGPT like crazy to learn all kinds of things, but as we do this more and more, I just wonder a little bit about kind of what we lose. Like um, if we go to a conference and what do we talk to people about when we're not, we're not learning from each other? What are we still teaching each other when we're learning everything from AI? I don't know, open question. Uh, it's just something I've been thinking about. I'm sure you're thinking about it too. I'd love to discuss it with you in the comments below. So thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.